Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and today on the channel we are going to be talking about the brand new CL Racing F4 V2. So if you've been following around with the channel you know that the CL Racing F4 is one that I've come to trust a lot in the past few months and I've used it on a lot of my builds because it's just a super solid flight controller with the great performance and a, a super easy wiring layout that is just literally no brainer you barely even need a manual to put it together. So uh, when uh, Beaver FPV said that they had the V2s in stock, they sent me one to check it out and I'm super excited to bring it to you guys and talk about it today. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. Let's compare it to the old CL Racing F4 and see what changed and the new features that the CL Racing F4 V2 has to offer. All right, so what I have here are the two packages for the CL Racing F4. The one over here is the old CL Racing F4 model, as you can see, and this one here is the new one. And the only really difference here is that it actually has an Armaton Quads logo on it. So I'm wondering if they have some sort of deal with Armaton. I'm not aware of that yet, but uh, that's basically the only difference in the box. So now let's take a look at the flight controller itself. So right away, you will notice a few differences with the new CL Racing F4, mainly that it already has these gummies and it has this new port over here. So what is this all about? So they went ahead and enlarged the holes around the, the mounting points for the CL Racing F4 and built in some gummies for it, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I've been soft mounting my CL Racing F4s with uh, bobbins and they've been working really well that way, but having this is just gonna make the stack a lot smaller and easier to manage. So I'm really happy about that already. Um, that's one of the first things you're gonna notice. Uh, of course, the, you're gonna notice also that at the top of the CL Racing F4, the new one, there's a lot more pads. And uh, that's because the CL Racing F4 V2 brings in a few new features such as camera control and uh, smart audio without you having to use one of the other TX ports on the uh, old CL Racing F4, which is what you had to do before. This one has a lot of the pads already laid out. I'm gonna link up to the manual as well so you guys can take a look and see what that's all about. Also on the reverse side here, you'll notice right away that we still have the uh, the the SD card reader and everything, and the battery pads are still here as well, but not really any other pads are down here anymore. Like you used to have to put your radio receiver at the bottom side here of the CL Racing for the V1, but uh, that now has all been moved to the top. Uh, another thing you will notice is that the in terms of componentry here is that we have much beefier uh, back circuitry going on over here and it's switchable between five volts and nine volts. So now you can feed your VTX in your camera either five volt or nine volt by selecting a jumper on the side. And we're gonna go into detail on all the pads in a second. I'm just giving you guys a brief overview. But you can see that it has some pretty big inductor coils in here too and a pretty big capacitor bank, which leads me to believe that they're trying really hard to filter this. So maybe it'll have better filtering than the old cell racing F4 because as you can see, the coils are much smaller on this one right here. They're just down here at the bottom and uh, there's a lot less capacitors on, on this board in general. So hopefully we'll get even cleaner video out of the V2 and I'm gonna be testing that out and talking to you guys about it as we go for sure. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that the uh, this circuitry right here is for the OSD and it's been moved up, up here to the, um, it's been moved to the upper side of the board instead of being on the bottom. Here, I'm gonna flip it in a second here. And I do apologize if it keeps going out of focus. Um, right there, see, that's the same circuitry right there at the bottom. So the OSD used to be at the bottom of the CL Racing 4. It's been moved to the top, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the gyro is still almost in the same location. Let me just grab something that I can point with a little bit better here. All right, so the gyro right there uh, on the CL Racing 4 V2 is now in a more centered position than it was on the CL Racing V1. So it's moved around a little bit. And as you can see, the STM, the F4 chip controller, is not present at the top, it's been actually moved to the bottom of the board. So I'm not sure what that's all gonna do in terms of performance, moving these things around, having the gyro a little bit more centered. From what I understand, gyro positioning is not really that important. Uh, as long as it's like on the quad, pretty much, it'll work in terms of a gyro. And the last really thing here that I did notice is that the Seal Racing F4V1 had this built-in buzzer, which was kind of crappy. It was pretty, uh, pretty low, it didn't really do much. So they got rid of that, and on the new Seal Racing F4, they have uh, just buzzer pads over here at the next to where the next to where you uh, would connect your. Oh, sorry about the focus, there, guys. One sec. All right, guys. So here we are looking at this CL Racing F4, and uh, as I mentioned, so this here over here is the back circuitry. It is a two amp filter back for both the five volt or nine volt that you can select right over here. So each one of these is going to be pumping out two amps for your VTX and your camera. Down over here we have the VTX pad, so there's a VTX signal so that you can uh, 
run your pass through to your OSD. We have a VTX plus and minus. It's going to be feeding either nine or five volts. I think that's selectable, which is kind of neat. And uh, then we have um, uh, <clears throat> the TX pads, a few TX pads that you can use for other purposes, such as uh, telemetry and so on. Uh, we have the LED pads over here, so you can have your LED strips and change the colors and all that good stuff. And over here we have our pinout for uh, four and one ESC, so you no longer have to run the ESCs, uh, the, the pins from your four and one, and solder them individually to one of these ports. You can just literally connect it directly over here, which is a super nice feature that it did not come with the old CL Racing F4. I'm gonna put the old CL Racing F4 here on the side here, just a second, so that we can, uh, so you can see how different it is. So before. Uh, this here would have been the VTX signal on right over here, VTX signal, VTX plus, VTX minus, and then basically just the LED stuff. So they added a couple of TX pins over here so that you can uh, do use the different UART ports for different applications if you may have them. So as I mentioned before too, up here we have the OSD circuitry, the selector for 5 volt and the selector for 9 volt is down over here. Now I'm just going to flip the board over real quick here, see if that's going to help. Nope. So that's now upside down to us. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit here so we can look at the pads up the top. So the CL Racing V1 here, you can see there is a camera signal, camera plus, camera minus. There's a lot more going on up here. So I'll explain to you guys what it is. Down over here, the first pad we have here is the camera C or camera control. So the new Betaflight 3.2 features allows you to change your uh, camera settings directly from your OSD, which is pretty nice, especially if you fly in different lighting conditions all the time. So all you'd have to do is uh, wire that to your camera control into here and you'd be able to do that. Then we have camera signal so that you can patch through your video to get OSD, camera plus and camera minus. And we also have a telemetry pad. So a direct telemetry pad, apparently it's a dedicated, um, was it inverted? But a yes, it has a dedicated hardware inverter that you can turn on and off. And uh, so for you guys that run um, Tyrannus telemetry, no longer a problem. It's gonna be super easy. There's a pad right here. We have our 3.3 volt, our satellite and our S bus, and then we have our five volt and ground. So all your radio stuff is gonna be going right about this quadrant right here, instead of on the bottom, how it was on the old CL racing. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, the old CL racing all over the, the radio pads. So we had S bus, satellite, uh, 3.3 volts, ground, telemetry, sorry, 5.5 volts, telemetry, 3.3 volts, and then PPM. So they changed it around a little bit. Uh, I do appreciate these changes personally. I really did not like the buzzer here. I, I don't know. It's, it's a piece of crap, and I turn off the buzzer anyway. So I appreciate having a cleaner, no buzzer type thing going on up here. Also impressed by the size of the coils that they're using on the backs and uh, you can see here I was talking about the capacitor bank. So hopefully this is going to provide us even cleaner power than the old generation one. Now if you flip it around, <clears throat> it hasn't changed that dramatically here. As you can see the OSD circuitry has changed spots with the F4 chip. Now the F4 chip now lives at the bottom, which is kind of interesting, I'm not sure why, I'm sure they had their reasons. Over here on the side now we have a buzzer minus, buzzer plus, so you can attach your buzzer here and you can put a much louder buzzer if that's what you like to do. I don't really care about that stuff so I'm going to leave mine alone. And down over here we have our battery minus and our battery plus. We still have the, the current sensor right here which reads up to 136 amps even though this board is capable of 160 amps. So you can totally run uh, all the way up to 6S on this board directly no problem at all. And of course we still have the SD card right here so that you can do your black box super easily. And uh, yeah, overall um, those are the main changes between the two uh, CL Racings. Uh, I'm still expecting the same level of performance out of this one in terms of flight characteristics and how clean it is. And uh, I'm just hoping that with the new pads and the camera control I can start making use of some of those awesome features that uh, Betaflight has to offer. Oh yeah, one thing I did forget to mention guys is that the ESC pads are still all around the perimeter of the top side of the board. So we have ESC plus minus and in between each one of those is the signal pad that corresponds to that corner motor. So it's super easy to wire motors in traditional ESCs or you can use the four in one like I mentioned before. All right guys, so that pretty much boils down what is up with the new CL Racing F4, uh, the V2, which I really highly recommend you might check, want to check it out because uh, it is a great FC. And if this is an improvement on the old CL Racing F4, which I do believe it is, then uh, I don't know, you're in for a really, really good treat because these boards fly great. Super easy to wire. Uh, as you saw there, all the pads are extremely well labeled, so you barely even need a manual. And uh, just to mention again, the new features in comparison to the old CL Racing F4, if you're already a CL Racing user, are the new 4 one or the 4-in-1 ESC port, like I mentioned before, right here on the corner. It has a dedicated S-Bus inverter, so for you guys that run Tyrannus and Telemetry, it's no longer a problem, it's gonna be much easier to do. It has the camera settings on the OSD, so you can do your camera settings if you change lighting conditions often. And it has a dedicated 5-volt, 9-volt, 
amp, uh, two amp back, one for the camera and one for the VTX so you can get the cleanest power available. So I'm really hoping that this one here is gonna be even better in terms of video than the old CL Racing F4. My only gripe with the old CL Racing F4 is that sometimes you get a bit of those lines going through your video even though I don't use the OSD. Um, so that's really my only gripe with it is that there's sometimes a lot of electrical noise and I'm hoping that uh, this one here with the new BEX is gonna be a lot cleaner, especially if we make use of a capacitor or uh, something like that to further help uh, attenuate those uh, those noisy lines on your video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that, go down and head down over to uh, Beaver FPV and check out their awesome selection. They have some of the best selection of gear and FPV equipment in Canada, so you might wanna check them out. They definitely have these in stock right now, so if you wanna upgrade your build and get something that Fly is just amazing. Go check out the CL Racing F4 and get yourself Beta Flight 3.2 and start making use of those new features like uh, dynamic filters and the PT1 filters as well because uh, that really makes a huge difference on how your quad feels. So as always, I hope you learned something here today. I hope you enjoyed the show and I'll catch you next time.